we have to balance two things. Yeah. If we tighten too late, then inflation could get entrenched. And that's a problem because then bringing it back down later would be more costly. If we tighten too much, then the economy can tip over into a recession. And so that's the fine line that policymakers have to walk. Right now, in the European context, I would say that there is some tightening that's been projected, that has been announced, it's going to be taking place. I think we have to be very careful about what's happening to inflation expectations. That's going to be a clear signal as to whether the broader public, firms and households, whether they think that somehow central banks have lost the plot or not. Right now, when we look at inflation expectations, what households or firms are expecting for inflation in, say, three years or five years, this has not increased very much from the 2% target. So as of now, the situation on that front is relatively, relatively good. Let's move on uh, to another topic, which is uh, also here on the agenda among the G7 finance ministers and central bankers, which is debt sustainability, especially for the emerging world. Given that the dollar has appreciated that much, given that the Fed is going into the hiking cycle, so how concerned are you about potential defaults in the emerging market world? Well, there are a number of factors here that make us quite worried. So first, we have to remember we're coming out of two years of pandemics. And, and do, during those two years, governments have tried to support the population. They have they had to use the fiscal space they had. Many countries had relatively limited fiscal space, but they had to do as much as they could. So we're coming out of this situation with, for some countries, higher debt levels, higher debt service. And then we're seeing global interest rates rising. So there's going to be a debt service component that is going to be increasing over time. And that could tip some of, some of these countries into a difficult put them into it in a tight spot. So we are concerned about that. The second factor here is, as you pointed out, whenever the Federal Reserve or major central banks start hiking interest rates, then it makes the situation very, very difficult for a number of emerging market economies. Now, so far, the markets have been differentiating quite strongly between emerging market economies. Some of them have strengthened, some of them have weakened. You look at Brazil, for instance, versus uh, countries that are closer to Russia and Ukraine and more impacted, the market has been differentiated. But we are concerned that as these currencies depreciate, capital might start flowing out, interest rates might rise, some of these countries might have problems. So where are the weak spots? Because if you're saying some of these countries might have problems, like many years ago it was the LADAM crisis, also triggered by um, the Fed high tightening cycle, but also other problems. So which countries are weak? Well, it, it, without necessarily naming individual countries, I mean, we know some countries have already approached the fund. For instance, countries like Sri Lanka has, has approached the fund and is in a situation where they've suspended their debt payments. But otherwise, you can think about countries that are vulnerable because they are close trading partners of Russia and Ukraine, or they are very dependent on imports of uh, wheat, for instance, or sort of food imports from, or energy imports for, from Ukraine, or they have initial debt levels that are already quite elevated in a relatively precarious financial situation. So there are a number of countries that we are talking to. We're monitoring what's going on. We're standing ready to assist them if they need financial assistance. Are you also looking uh, into assisting them because of the soaring food prices? Because that clearly could trigger a major crisis for many countries. Yes, there's a common initiative that was just announced a few days ago. I mean, the IMF is not directly involved with uh, sort of food supplies, but we are standing ready to provide technical assistance to help countries design programs that will help support the most vulnerable segments of the population. The low-income households in any country are really hurt by increase in food and energy prices, and so we can help countries design programs that will target help where it's needed most, and then we can provide financial assistance for those countries that have, you know, that meet the parameters for, for our help. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.